Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel Med Edophilia. So in our previous video, we were discussing about structural organization in animals and we covered epithelial tissue and we also covered cell junctions. So now let's move on to the most abundant, most widely distributed tissue in the whole body of animals, which is the connective tissue. So as the name suggests, connective tissues function is to connect, is to link and support other tissues and organs of the body. To understand different connective tissues, I will first provide you with a flow chart which will help you to understand the connective tissue in a nutshell. So we can classify connective tissue into three types, namely loose connective tissue, dense connective tissue and the specialized connective tissue. The loose connective tissue can be further divided into areolar and adipose tissue. And the dense connective tissue can be divided into regular and irregular. So dense regular connective tissue and dense irregular connective tissue. Okay. Regular dense connective tissue can again be classified into tendons and ligaments. So now we will classify specialized connective tissue. Specialized connective tissue can be classified into skeletal as well as fluid. Skeletal meaning it is solid. Okay, fluid as you know it is gas or liquid. So skeletal connective tissue can be further classified into bones and cartilages and fluid connective tissue includes the blood and lymph. So this flowchart is extremely important and will make your learning process easier because here everything is in a nutshell. So it's easy for you to revise. So connective tissue can be classified into three types, loose, dense and specialized. Loose can be classified into areolar and adipose and dense can be classified into regular and irregular out of which regular can be further classified into tendons and ligaments. Specialized connective tissue can be classified into skeletal and fluid. Skeletal is of two types, bones and cartilages. Yes, and fluid is again includes blood and lymph. So let's talk more about these connective tissue. Any tissue for that matter is composed of cells I know. Okay. And cells of connective tissue secrete two things. One the matrix and the fibers. Fibers include collagen fibers, elastin fibers. Okay. And these are the structural proteins. So you should remember that in all connective tissue except blood, cells secrete fibers of structural proteins called collagen or elastin. Okay. So in blood, the cells that secrete fibers is absent. Remember, very, very important. So what's the function of these fibers that is collagen and elastin? These form the structural proteins I told you and this help in providing strength and elasticity and flexibility to the tissue. Strength is provided by the collagen fiber and whereas elasticity, the name itself tells you elastin provides elasticity and flexibility to the tissue. So I told you cells secrete fibers which is elastin and collagen and they also secrete matrix. So this matrix is nothing but modified polysaccharides. These matrix are nothing but intercellular substances that is they accumulate between the cells and the fibers. So what is the other name of matrix? Ground substance because it's present between the cells and the fibers and it is a modified polysaccharide. Okay. So, firstly, we look at loose connective tissue and that too, areolar connective tissue. So, since it's a loose connective tissue, cells and fibers, they are loosely arranged. That's why it's called loose connective tissue. And the matrix is semi-fluid in nature. Again, these, uh, these two reasons, the first two points I told you, explains why the tissue, that the areolar tissue comes under the loose connective tissue. Areolar tissue is present beneath the skin. So it serves as a support framework for the epithelium. 
so areolar tissue is found beneath the sink skin important okay areolar tissue any connective tissue for that matter told you it contains cells so now let's look at the cells present in areolar tissue so there are different types of cells first cells present in areolar tissue is the fibroblasts fibroblasts means cells that secrete or produce fibers next type of before moving on to the next type look at the word fibroblast fibro means fiber break the word and derive the meaning as always okay blast means in biology it means make or produce you might also come across terms like osteoclast and osteoblast so in biology clast means eating okay eating and blast means making and osteo means bone okay so bone eating cells are osteoclasts and bone making or producing or secreting cells are osteoblasts so the first type of cells present in areolar tissue is the fibroblast next is the macrophages and next is the mast cells so now let's look look at the different types of cells present in areolar tissue one by one first we saw fibroblast cells and next is a uh, mast cells next is macrophages otherwise known as histiocytes and next is the plasma cells fibroblast cells as i already mentioned they secrete fibers and matrix so remember cells fibroblast cells they not only help in secreting fibers but they also help in secreting the matrix the ground substance so fibers are of three types collagen and elastin i already told you and there is also a type of fiber known as reticular fibers collagen fibers are something inelastic which provides strength whereas elastic fibers are elastic in nature they provide flexibility reticular fibers as the name suggests it's a reticulum it's a meshwork it's a network or, or a framework okay of fibers collagen fibers are white elastin yellow elastin we say so it's yellow and um, collagen fibers are unbranched and elastin fibers are branched okay branched so it provides elasticity so it is uh, pro so it provides flexibility so that way you can remember so please note uh, and take a pause over here to understand the differences of collagen and elastin fibers collagen fibers on boiling yields a substance known as gelatin whereas when you boil elastin fibers there is no effect okay so this is a new term i have introduced here gelatin gelatin is a substance which is uh, which is got when collagen fibers are boiled okay so next now let's talk about the next type of cells which are the mast cells these mast cells are important because they help in secreting three important substances different substances first is the histamine vasodilator next serotonin next is heparin okay histamine is vasodilator serotonin is vasoconstrictor and heparin is an anti coagulant anti coagulant means the one which prevents coagulation or clotting of blood so anti means it prevents from clotting so what do we mean by vasodilator vasoconstrictor okay uh, and let's take a blood vessel like this this is the normal blood vessel dilation means expanding okay so when the blood vessel uh, is exposed to histamine it undergoes dilation vaso means blood vessel blood or blood vessel uh, in biology so the blood vessel expands it becomes broader okay the opening becomes broader it dilates and when it's exposed to serotonin okay uh, the uh, uh, serotonin has a vaso constrictor effect on blood vessels so mast cells are important in secreting these three chemical substances next we move on to the next types of cells which is the macrophages or histiocytes histio itself means tissue and cytes means cell so these are 
present these are cells of the tissues obviously and macrophages tell you phages means what it is undergoing phagocytosis isn't it so these are cells help in phagocytosis that is they ingest cell debris bacteria and other foreign particles so that's the role of macrophages or histiocytes the next type of cells is the plasma cells okay plasma cells produce antibodies or immunoglobulins so it helps in providing immunity to the body so this is all about the different types of cells present in areolar tissue okay so i told you the difference between collagen fibers and elastin fibers okay it are collagen fibers okay it is a bundle and elastin fibers they are branched it is in the form of coil and reticular fibers it is a meshwork or framework of fibers so now is the time to talk about the next type of tissue which is the adipose tissue by now most of you would have known the meaning the adipose tissue is nothing but a fat tissue so it is also located beneath the skin just like areolar tissue so what are the tissues located beneath the skin areolar and adipose tissue so as i told you it helps in storage of fat fat meaning excess of nutrients that is not immediately used so those nutrients excess nutrients are converted into fats and hence they are stored so example of adipose tissue is the hump of camel and blubber of whale and polar bears yes so the main function of fat is that it helps in insulation it acts as a shock absorber so it helps in reducing the body heat loss okay that that is what is the basic meaning of insulation so that's it pertaining to loose connective tissue talking about dense connective tissue it has got the name dense because the fibers and fibroblasts are compactly arranged they are dense compact and dense and i told you that dense connective tissue can be classified as regular or irregular based on the pattern or orientation in which these fibers are arranged if they are arranged regularly in a parallel fashion then they are regular yes regular dense connective tissue if it's uh, arranged randomly uh, which are not parallel they're just uh, scattered then it is irregular so dense can uh, dense regular connective tissue can be of two types which is tendons and ligaments so here is a trick to remember um because people usually get confused between tendon and ligament uh, whether it is attaching bones and muscles or bone to bone remember the stick mbt so that is muscle to bone which is tendons the one which is attaching skeletal muscles to bone is tendons so you can also remember it as mr bean teddy you've seen the cartoon mr bean isn't it so that cartoon always has a teddy in in his hands so you can remember the first letters will give you the uh, clue m b t muscle to bone is tendons understood so this is a super trick which will help you ace and the five marks of the mcq okay so let's talk about tense irregular connective tissue so i told you that they are irregularly arranged they are scattered they are not parallel to each other so they they uh, the fibers are mostly collagen okay because they are dense in nature and they are differently oriented they are present in the skin so skin is an example of dense irregular connective tissue so i'll draw here so please understand the difference between how the fibers are arranged whether parallelly arranged or scattered differently oriented okay so now we move on to skeletal tissue that is which comes under specialized connective tissue the first one is about cartilage and the next one is about bones cartilage is comparatively softer 
Why? Because the intercellular material of cartilage is solid and pliable. The words are extremely important and this is going to come in your MCQ. Okay, solid and pliable. Whereas in bone, it is hard and non-pliable. Okay, the intercellular material or the matrix or the ground substance. However, they can change the uh, they can use the alternate words but they all mean the same whether they use intercellular material whether they use ground substance or whether they use matrix all means the same so in cartilage it is solid pliable and resists compression whereas in bones it is hard and non pliable these terms are important okay so note to differentiate and learn so cells of cartilage are known as chondrocytes and cells of bones are obviously known as osteocytes. So cartilages transform into bones. So in vertebrate, the cartilages in the embryo, okay, they are replaced by bones in adults. Okay, so cartilages are present in various parts of the body. For, to list out few. They are present in the tip of the nose. Yes. So when I hear this term tip of the nose, I remember the trick which I told you in my previous video. That is the big E. Yes. Elastic cartilage. Okay. Where is elastic cartilage present? All starting from E. External ear which is pinna. Eustachian tube. Yes. So all this are composed of elastic cartilage and, uh, and along with that remember tip of the nose also has elastic cartilage in it and another e which i left out here is epiglottis isn't it so there are four e, uh, four e's okay elastic cartilage is present in external ear which is the pinna eustachian tube and the epiglottis this is a super trick so please remember so another um, uh, I would like to add on few points which are tested in MCQs as in what type of cartilages are present in which places. The intervertebral disc, okay. What do I mean by intervertebral disc? The vertebra. There are 12 vertebra, is it? Yes. So, between each vertebra, the, the intervertebra, vertebral disc is composed of fibrous cartilage. Whereas the intercostal, that is between the ribs, so that it was between the vertebrae, adjacent vertebrae, and this is between the ribs, intercostal, coastal means ribs, inter means between, that is made up of hyaline cartilage, intervertebral disc, okay, remember, and intercostal, remember. Fibrous cartilage is also present in pubic symphysis. This term you will learn in chapter locomotion, uh, locomotion and movement. Okay, the uh, pelvic girdle, that part. Okay, the pubic symphysis comes under that. So that is also composed of fibrous cartilage. Next, the nasal septum. Do you see hyaline cartilage is one of the hardest cartilages and it is not movable. You see the tip of the nose, you can move it. Just try, try moving your nose. Yes, the septum, the partition, that part you cannot move. It is immovable. So that part till the uh, tip of the nose, it is made up of hyaline cartilage. Whereas the tip of the nose is made up of elastic cartilage. So remember, uh, I told you two confusing terms. I told you about intervertebral disc. Yes, and I told you about intercostal, uh, intervertebral disc and I told you about intercostal cartilage that is hyaline cartilage and I told you about the nasal septum which is again hyaline cartilage whereas tip of the nose is elastic cartilage. So remember, do not get confused. Okay, so that's it about cartilages. Now let's move on to bones. I told you it's hard, non-pliable. Uh, matrix is present uh, and it is rich in calcium salts. And it's obvious, I think, I all must be knowing that a good intake of calcium in your diet will help your bones to be stronger. Okay, and there are a lot of collagen fibers which give the bone its strength, okay, its hardness. So, the hardness is because of two things, calcium salts and of collagen fibers. And Okay, 
next is uh, next uh, function is that it helps in providing a structural frame to the body and it supports and protects the soft inner tissues and organs so for example let's take the rib cage so the rib cage is a bony enclosure isn't it so there is the sternum in the there which is the breast bone and there is a rib cage over here and i told you in the intercostal cartilage is nothing but the hyaline cartilage so what are the different organs which are protected by the rib cage the lungs the heart so these are the organs so isn't it true to say that the bone is the one which is protecting the uh, inner organs yes correct so yeah so bone cells are known as osteocytes and these are present in spaces called lacunae okay new term here so no term lacunae these are spaces in which the bone cells or the osteocytes are present the limb bones that is the long bones of the legs they serve as weight bearing in function okay the main function is to bear weight because the leg bone if you see it bears the entire weight of the upper body yes and the abdomen so the function there are several functions structural frame to the body support and protection and weight bearing function and they also interact with the skeletal muscle to bring about movements so what is responsible for movement of our body two things one is the bone the other one is the muscle next function is hemopoiesis so why because bones contain substance known as bone marrow so bone marrow is the site of hemopoiesis hemo means blood poiesis means making the site of production of blood cells is bone marrow so this is all about um tissues and about muscular tissue uh, and about the cardiac tissue about neural tissue you will learn in the respective t- uh, chapters okay about cardiac tissue you will learn about uh, about it in the chapter circulatory system and about muscular tissue you, you will learn about uh, learn about it in the chapter locomotion and movement and about neural tissue you will learn this in the chapter neural control and coordination that is the structure of neuron the axon the dendrite and all this just very basic so i am not going to do that for now so till now i have covered all the important uh, things that you need to know about tissues and when i say tissues you mainly need to concentrate on connective tissue epidermal tissue and the cell junction topic so that completes the topic of tissues this marks the end of today's lecture and i request you to practice a lot of mcqs on the chapter and please like share comment and subscribe to my channel if you find this worthy it adds a lot of motivation to me to help you guys for your neat preparation thank you so much